I'm here with comic book artist and writer who has uh, done work for books like Fables, Andrew Peepoy. How are you doing today, sir? Doing, doing great. Happy to be here. How are you enjoying the convention so far? Oh, I mean, I always love being at C2E2. Um, it, I mean, well, one, it's my hometown show, so it, it, it's, uh, you know, great not to have to travel for a show, but it's also, it also brings in a really good crowd, so I always have a good time here. What got you first interested in making comics? I mean, I guess, you know, like any kid, you know, I was doing little doodles and drawings as a kid, you know, and then uh, about fourth grade Superman the movie came out, and so I started reading more comics, and all my little drawings started turning into Superman, and then Batman, and things like that, and eventually I started coming up with my own characters, and it went from there. Were there any creators or artists that inspired you? Oh, I mean, tons. So many. I mean, how, how, lo how long do you have for me to list them all off? I mean, I mean some, of my, some of my big favorites, like my number one influence would be Dan DiCarlo, who drew Betty and Veronica for 50 years. Uh, but also uh, Russell Keaton, Roy Crane, Bob Lubbers, Bob Oxner, and then more modern people like Jamie Hewlett or Hank Kuypers or Francois Schwitem. You know, so, so, so many. I mean, I could go on forever, you know. Can you tell us how you d developed your artistic and writing styles? Um, writing style is just sort of like trial and error. I sit down and I just, like I'll usually leave my house, go out someplace else, like a sit in a coffee shop or Panera or something like that with some headphones on and just make sure that I don't have the internet, I don't have the computer to distract me and I just sit there and I try to just come up with something and I just sit there I'll just sit there all day until I until I sort of so I sort of force myself to actually have to come up with something as far as drawing I mean that's just evolved on and off over the years I mean like I said you mentioned some of the you know like the, some of the influences I mentioned you know I'm, ins I'm inspired by some of them and so like especially much of my style if you were to look at it you would say oh yeah you've been looking at Dan DiCarlo and those people who know the less you know lesser known people like Russell Keaton or Roy Crane might spot that those influences but uh yeah, it's just, you know, you look at stuff and you admire it and it ends up incorporating itself into your work, but hopefully you can take what they taught you and do your own twist on it. You know? Can you tell us, tell our viewers a little bit about your webcomic, uh, Simone and Ajax? Uh, Simone and Ajax has been around for nearly 20 years in one form or another. Um, and at the moment, I just recently brought it back as a weekly web strip appearing at uh, simoneandajax.com or, if it's easier, peepoy, P-E-P-O-Y.com, and click on the link to them. And um, it's the adventures of uh, Simone, 20-something-year-old girl, and her best friend, who happens to be a three-foot-tall cartoony dinosaur. Uh, they go on adventures to any time or place I happen to feel like sending them. If you're looking for something deep and meaningful, it's not there. This is, this is fun. This is silly. It's just, you know, slap, it's like slapstick adventure. Um, I, 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 just, I just have a good time putting them in weird situations that they shouldn't be in and finding what chaos ensues. What was the inspiration for the comic? They just sort of evolved out of doodles that I would be doing in college. Uh, you know, Ajax was just something that ended up in the margins of my notes in a class or something, or I was in one particularly dull class and had a cute girl sitting next to me in the class, so I was inspired to draw a girl, you know, a cute girl in my notes. and. Simone sort of uh, evolved out of that. And what are you working on currently? Well, um, I, I, being freelance, I, it changes from month to month what I'm working on. What I've been doing a lot of lately, in, recent, in the last years, few years, is a lot of uh, inking for The Simpsons and Futurama for Bongo Comics. Um, I, for a number of years, have been involved with the Fables books over at DC. Like I had been, I had been the regular inker on Jack, but since that ended, I sort of just come and go on Fables when they need me. So I, in the last few months, I have done, uh, I have worked on like the last four or five issues in a row of Fables, uh, as well. Like I said, Simone and Ajax, which you know I'm trying, which I'm trying to get back up to every week again, and uh, whatever else happens to come along. You know, I did an issue of Phantom Stranger recently. Uh, I did a, I did a cover for Archie that's in, uh, just been solicited for. Um, which if I can show it on camera here real quick. There you go, a little sneak peek. Uh, Archie in outer space, sort of an homage to Wally Wood. And, uh, uh, so yeah, you know, whatever, it, it's just whatever comes along. Well, thank you very much for talking with us, and I hope you have a great convention. Okay, well, thanks for stopping by.